fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for a model, build and rules review of the Primaris Space Marine Hellblaster Squad from the Dark Imperium box set. So I continue on with my review of the miniatures that come in the new Warhammer 40,000 starter set, looking at the new Primaris Space Marines that burst onto the scene. And today we're looking at the heavy shooty option of this group which is the what's called the Hell Blaster Squad. So what I'm going to do in this review is we're going to look at the models, I'm going to talk about the kit quality, I'm going to talk a little bit about the modeling as well, uh, and the build, and, uh, and how you can add a bit of character to these models. I'm then going to follow on with some size comparisons against other miniatures from the Warhammer 40,000 and Horus Heresy range, and then finally I'm going to talk about the rules and tactics for using these in games of 8th edition. Let's, uh, let's start off by having a look at these guys. Now I've had a bit of fun with these in terms of personalising them and uh, adding a bit of individuality and character to them. What are these guys? Well, these guys are Primaris Space Marines and they're armed with these weapons which are clearly an Imperial plasma design. Now, in the game these are referred to as plasma incinerators which is quite possibly the worst weapon name i've heard in the history of warhammer 40,000. let's just be quite clear a plasma incinerator is what every imperial citizen has in the garbage section of their house or the rubbish section you take your waste you put it in the plasma incinerator you press a button and it turns to ash and then that gets sucked down the chute and goes to recycle whatever they have in the 41st millennium Plasma incinerator for a, for a long-range accurate plasma gun isn't a very good name. But fortunately the 1980s gave some great science fiction films and from those science fiction films I draw what I call these and what I advocate everybody calls these weapons. And the film of course is James Cameron's A Terminator and there's a famous scene in that, well it's full of iconic scenes, it's a brilliant movie. But there's a particular scene where the Terminator, none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger, goes into a gun shop to acquire weapons to continue with his assassination attempt on Sarah Connor. So he asks the gun owner for a variety of different firearms and there's a great time slip comedy moment when he asks for a phased plasma rifle in the 40 watt range and the gun shop owner replies only what you see pal then Arnie comes out of his classic line Uzi 9mm. I thought hello we've got a little bit of uh, these things are plasma rifles so instead of phased plasma rifles in the 40 watt range these are clearly phased plasma rifles in the 40k range so there you have it don't call them plasma incinerators that's what every imperial citizen puts their rubbish in and vaporizes it maybe even the, they even crap in them as well phased plasma rifles much better name and that's what I'm going to refer to these from here on in so face plasma rifle very good nice looking weapon the miniatures they are the same sort of multi-part essentially monopose models as they're provided this is a Primaris sergeant he's got this great inbuilt respirator gill he hasn't got a helmet suggesting that this is perhaps a permanent cybernetic change to his body maybe it's like an osmotic gill and those people who remember the original Lee Man Russ picture from Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader will probably recognize the design styling so that looks really good. Big chunky plasma weapon, the same sort of modern military cues we've seen on the other Primaris weapons so far. Holstered pistols, nice to see. Equipment pouches, great. Spare plasma flasks in this pouch, really nice touch. Yeah and just you know like the rest of the Primaris Marines they've got this really futuristic look. Yeah very nice looking models. We'll now look through the troopers. Get the sergeant and then two other posers. So two of the models are repeats. Now I've done some work to modify the posers and we'll talk about that later. But the rest of the squad have all got helmets on. But yeah, they're otherwise the same. Same sort of uh, setup. The sculpts have done a great job of posing these. Got, you know, really realistic style poses and the fact that they're taller larger models has helped them as well some of the poses of these guys are more splayed out than the previous intercessor marines we've looked at but this guy is actually more upright so yeah looks a bit i think it looks quite cool ones like this guy are more in a bit of a classic legs akimbo space marine pose that games workshop is quite well known for got all the features of primaris marines that we've seen previously yeah, and the same quality of detail we've had on other models. So yeah, very good. And another, you know, having completed building these, another another very handsome looking unit to add to the my 
Primaris Force. And great design features as well. I love the look of the face plasma rifles. Great looking weapon, really is. Got an interesting mixture of, you know, you've got sort of the Pickney rail again, you've got this carry handle, so it feels like a quite a robust thing. I know uh, a couple of commenters were saying how 40k weapons don't have buttstocks. Well, this one does. It looks like it's an extendable telescoping type as well. Very nice feature. And, and that kind of fits with this as being a longer range support weapon to help perhaps even the Space Marine with his powered armor needs a, needs a way of stabilizing his fire and aiming more accurately. Interesting. So there's a quick look at the models. Right, let's talk about the kit. So these are plastic multi-part models. They're in effect monopose without any conversion work. In terms of the kit quality, there is a lot of cleanup in terms of mod line removal to do on these guys to get them looking like this. In terms of the amount of effort required, I'd say it was actually comparable to preparing a forge old resin miniature for most of them. And I think this is due to the fact that GW's outsourced some production. Right, and let me explain why. The Sergeant model, this guy, there was not much cleanup required on it. And this is something I've said about my the original Intercessor Squad and the Primaris Heroes. He came from Sprue A, and Sprue A is what I call typical Games Workshop miniature quality. Very little to do in terms of mold line removal. Yeah, and just generally makes the models quick to build. The remaining four models came from Sprue B, which is this. And I think Sprue B has been, has been outsourced to a different manufacturer. If we get some shots, there you go, you can see the mold lines are quite prominent and they run across the weapon. You can see this going right across this Pitkin rail on this bolt rifle. There's a lot more mold line to remove on Sprue B. So if you're going for a look like this, where they're fully cleaned up and they're going to paint up brilliantly regardless of what, what your techniques you use on them, there is a lot of cleanup to do on most of these models. So yeah, just something to be aware of. And out of all the squads, this one was a real pain in the posterior to do because these plasma rifles, as you can see, you've got these coil assembly, whatever it is, which is a lot to clean out of. You've got the Pitkin rail, and there's a lot of cleanup to do there. I might have a little bit more. There might be just a touch to, to finish cleaning up there to brush out before I start painting these. But that took forever. It took ages. And then you've got another rail on the underside. So particularly on the four guys from Sprue B, the cleanup, the cleaning these up, oh gosh, what a pain. It's a shame that all of the miniatures in this set weren't made on the, by the equivalent manufacturer of what Sprue A and F were. And since I did my original review, I, I checked the Nurgle miniatures and all the Nurgle miniatures have been made to the same quality as the guys on A and F. It's only Sprue B, unfortunately, that we've got these heavy mold lines to remove. Anyway, I don't know what the issue is, but once you get around those mold lines, all the models fit together very well. They're all of equivalent detail. They're very good models. They, they do look great. So now, in terms of modeling, I've had a bit of fun with these on a couple of elements. So let's talk about poses first. These are monopose. This model here has got his arms in the supplied position. The poses they come in, they're okay, but I think you can do better with a little bit of work. So I cut the post off and reposed his head, got him in a more upright position. Now, let me show you the other model, which is identical. You can see how I've made this look different. So how I did this is I cut down the arm, this, the arm attachment point here and cut parts of the peg away to allow this to rotate. And by doing that, I've been able to vary the pose, not massively, but it still makes each miniature look more individual. They, they do look like they are different models. And let's have a look at the other two guys. A bit less variation here because, well, I actually quite like the aiming pose, so I didn't want to do quite as much. But they are slight, you know, you can do you can do the same trick with cutting the arm posts down to allow you to rotate the weapon and then doing the trick of the head. I guess I've made one guy look like he's aiming right down the barrel, whereas the other guy might be just getting ready to fire. And one guy's got his rifle level, he's got it slightly raised. The other thing I did with these models was a little bit of a homage to early Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine art. And that's around the design of the plasma, the muzzle brake. So on my Primaris Marine so far, I've bored out all the muzzle brakes on the guns. And obviously the plasma has a muzzle as well. However, what I've done is I've used the old style plasma dish muzzle effect to do these. And 
if we get this chap here, so this is one of the Death Eagle Marines from 1988, if I remember. Very old, old model. And you can see on his plasma gun, which he's armed with, how the barrel was kind of had this concave effect on it. And all the original plasma guns were like that. And you kind of imagined, and even some of them you saw them, and they were painted in silver. So you can imagine it had this this silver dish and there's a tiny little hole in the middle of it that the plasma came out of and the dish was kind of like a focusing device. And if we look at some old art, so anyone who remembers the days of Epic will know, remember this cover art, this excellent cover art from the game Space Marine, which was the infantry version of Adeptus Titanicus. And we had a Marine armed with a plasma rifle on the front. And he had this kind of, you can see that it had that sort of dish thing this small focal point of plasma. So it was almost like folks in the um, emitted plasma. You can see the curved effect that the artist created there. So I decided that was the look I wanted to go for on these guys. That's what I've done. And what I've done is I've used a wide drill bit and pin vise to create these dish effects on these barrels. Now, if you're interested in learning a bit more about that, I've shot a little leakage short of doing one of those and I'm going to post that separately. So if you're interested in seeing that for the, just a little demo of how to do these, check that out as well. It's very easy, but if you've not done it before, not sure about the tools, you might find it handy. There's one other thing I did with modifying these models and this was around the look. In the kit, they come with what looks like a foresight on the front of a plasma rifle, which I didn't like the look of. I thought it spoiled the nice smooth lines of the upper Gun. I didn't mind this one underneath, so it's more, you could almost imagine like that looks like it's integrated and part of the weapon and maybe, I don't know, maybe some cooling device, I don't know. It could be all sorts. It looks like it belongs there. The one on top just like, looks like it had been added as an afterthought. So I cut all those off uh, and cleaned and, all the, and smoothed it off so it was nice and clean and in profile again. I think the weapons look a lot, be a lot better for it and they fit the design trope of plasma weapons better uh, for 40k by taking those four sights off. I don't know. That's a personal taste thing, you know. I'm sure some of you will like the four sights, but for me, I much like them with those removed. So there you go. There's what I did modeling-wise to add some individuality and pull out some additional detail on these models. Let's just move swiftly on to some size comparisons. What I'll do for size comparisons is I'll do some comparisons against a variety of model sizes from both the Dark Imperium starter set and existing 40K ranges. So let's start off with a humble human. And today we have a Tercio officer from the Solar Auxilia Laz Rifle section. And this guy's a conversion with a blast pistol and a power glove or a power fist. Beautiful model. This is a four jawed model as well, as you may have guessed. And let's do a little size comparison. So yeah, the Primaris are suitably tall and imposing and they have a good head on this guy. If we get one that stood up straight, uh, even look, looks even more intimidating as well. So yeah, big guys, as, we, uh, as we've come to expect from Primaris. Right, the next thing to do is to compare to a classic Adeptus Astartes. And again from Forgeworld, we have a, a tactical support legionary from Forgeworld for the Heresy era, and he's armed with a Volkite Caliva. And I picked this out because that's a similar sort of long range rifle weapon and to the plasma rifles, the phased plasma rifles. Yeah, and they're big guys. As we've come to expect, the main difference in the size on these is in the leg sizes. The actual torsos and the heads and the arms are not a million miles away size wise. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of these converted with components like this. Uh, standard Space Marine arms, heads and backpacks. Okay, let's uh, now move up to a couple of guys from the Primaris unit. So here we've got the Lieutenant or Lieutenant. Take your pick. Armed with his bolt auto rifle and bolt pistol. Yeah, and he's the same size as these dudes, as you would expect. We've got El Capitano in his Gravis armor. And this guy does look taller, does look a bit more imposing. 
maybe I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's probably bulk and his armored cowl and this enormous iron halo that he's got. Great for dealing with jump packing um, raptors. Of course, we probably should have an Inceptor Marine. So here's the Inceptor Sergeant. Mobile Infantry Time. So Mobile Infantry versus Phased Plasma Rifles. Starship Troopers plays a Terminator. Yeah, and, and they're in, you know, the sizing is proportionate. You know, and he's basically the same sort of size as a captain. And then finally, and of course, I can't pass up the opportunity to poke fun at Games Workshop over the no primaris transport rule. And to do that, we're going to be assisted by a member of the Mechanicum. So this is a Myrmidon Secutor, which is an absolute loony, crazy and brilliant model from the Horus Heresy range by Forge World. Um, these are kind of like, well, these are like the warrior cults of the Mechanicum at the time of the Horus Heresy, and they're absolutely crazy but brilliant models. He's armed with a phased plasma fusel. So phased plasma fusel plays phased plasma rifle. Excellent. Power axe, a graviton gun, and he's about to chuck a melter bomb as well. Right. The reason why I've got this guy is also to just make the point that in the game, this chap is worth two normal infantry for transport purposes. That's right, two. So this is a Terminator equivalent model. Yeah, and the Myrmidon is absolutely enormous and eat and dwarfs the Primaris Marines. And if we just strip it down to the Hell Blaster squad again, um. you can see how he uh, he looms over even the Primaris Marines. Yeah, I've said it before and I'm going to continue saying it. If you want to play these guys in 40k, use normal transports, just count them as Terminator equivalents of transportation. No Primaris rule is ridiculous. And one final size comparison, being consistent with my other reviews, we've got a Contempt Dreadnought. This is the Iron Hands Relic version, armed with a Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon with integrated Graviton Gun and a Kerry's Assault Cannon. And just looking generally awesome and iron handy. And there you go. And the contempt is about twice the height of a Primaris Space Marine. So a bit like putting a standard Space Marine alongside a Castroferrum Dreadnought. It's going to be interesting once the Redemptor Dreadnought kit gets released to do the comparisons there because the Redemptor Dreadnought's enormous. I don't know if I'm going to buy one yet. It's tempting. So there's a comparison against a heavy Space Marine Walker. So there's a size comparison. So yeah, they're, they're in size with the Intercessor Marines, unsurprisingly. Let's finish up talking about rules. I'm going to talk about the rules from two perspectives. Firstly, the mini decks that is supplied with the Dark Imperium starter set. And secondly, Index Imperium 1, Forces of the Adeptus Astartes. And that's just to see if there's any differences between the two. Starting with the mini decks. Okay, so a Hell Blaster squad in the mini decks is a heavy support choice with a power level of 10. The Hellblaster Marines have got a basic Primaris profile. Obviously, that's oxymoronic. There's no such thing as a basic Primaris. They're extremely high quality troops. If you're unfamiliar, their move 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill is 3+, plus, strength and toughness are 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, and saving throw is 3+. Plus. The sergeant increases his attack stat and leadership by 1 point to 3 and 8 respectively. The squad is 1 sergeant and 4 hell blasters, and each model is equipped with a phased plasma rifle, a bolt pistol, frag grenades and crack grenades. Special rules are, and they show no no fear, and space marine chapters. Let's start with the plasma rifle, because that's what these are about. And these are, well, they're an interesting one. They're conceptually, they're a port straight from a Horus heresy of the idea of a tactical support squad. If you're not familiar with the idea of a tactical support squad, it's a squad armed with flamers, melt guns, plasma guns, volkite collivers and charges, Graviton guns in special cases like the Iron Hands. The whole squad is armed identically, so there's no guys with bolt guns. They're all armed with a special weapon, and they're kind of they sit between the tactical marines and the heavy support marines in terms of fire support capabilities. And the Hell Blaster squad is a direct port of that concept into 40k. A specialized squad, but very good at what they do. Plasma rifle has got a range of 30, it is rapid fire 1, strength is 7, AP is minus 4, and damage is 1. You have the option of firing in a supercharge mode, and if you do so, you increase the strength by a point and the damage by the point. So the strength goes up to eight, the damage goes up to two. However, when doing that, if you roll a one, 
and the model is instantly slain. So there's no, it's not even a mortal wound, they're instantly slain. Iris mode, however, as we'll come to, there are ways of mitigating the risk. So they've got a bolt pistol, a frag grenade, and a crack grenade, standard gear. Faction keywords, Imperium, Adeptus Astartes, Chapter, Keywords are Infantry Primaris and Hellblaster Squad. These guys are a light heavy weapon unit, and really, in all fairness, they're not that light, given the power of the plasma rifle. At strength seven, they're wounding most infantry targets on a three plus, and versus standard humans, they're going to be wounding on a two plus, because standard humans are only toughness three, and the like. So if you're fighting any of the various Xenos races like Eldar and Tau, these guys are great, and you don't even have to supercharge the weapon to get any better. If you supercharge your weapon, then you can move Space Marines on a 2+. plus. Fighting the Nurgle-esque opponents in the starter set, though, you're going to be on 3s most of the time. But that doesn't really matter so much, because with minus 4 AP, they're re rarely going to save. If you're struggling to deal with the Lord of Contagion on the Nurgle side, then these guys are your answer. These guys buff really well with some of the special characters for the Space Marine Primaris. And an obvious complement to them is a Space Marine Lieutenant, and particularly this guy armed with the Auto Bolt Rifle. And the reason he's a good buff is he allows you to re-roll fail to wound rolls, so you can enhance the deadliness of your firepower by using him. So that's one good link, and he, he's well armed to accompany them. And then obviously his extra wounds, close combat ability, and leadership are going to help them keep in the fight. Another good hero to accompany them is the Ancient, and that's for his relic banner, which we know about, obviously it has the morale benefit. It also means though, if one of these guys dies, they get to fire one last shot in a heroic effort. If they become a casualty when within six inches of this guy, they can make, on a roll of a four plus, they can make one final shot before expiring, or an attack if you're in close combat. Now, there's a clear synergy there with firing these guns on supercharge mode. If you fire them and blow up, if he's within six inches, then you've got a chance of taking a last shot, which can also be a supercharged shot before they expire. So he's worthy of consideration as well. If, however, you're really wanting to use these guys for pure firepower with minimal risk, your best character to accompany them in the starter set is the captain. And the reason for that is he allows you to re-roll any to hit rolls of one. So that re-roll will supersede the boom roll. So if you want to fire these guys, on the overcharge mode more often or all the time even, put this guy within six inches of them and any one results you get, you can re-roll those and, ho and you know, the odds are you will mitigate that explode result. And when you're at 15 inches or less, so de the firepower of these guys with 10 shots is absolutely devastating when they're overcharged. You can knock out medium vehicles. You can even threaten tanks, heavy tanks with these guys quite effectively. I mean, even a Bane Blade, is only toughness eight, so you're wounding on a four plus and the Bane Blade gets no save against these. A few turns five supported by some other troops and you can wear down even heavy tanks quite quickly with these guys. Very potent. And with 30 inches range, I'd say they're a real jack of all trades fire support unit. As I say, your three heroes that come with the game can really enhance the capability of these guys in a firefight. And arguably, particularly in the starter set, you've got the advantages of the Primaris Space Marine player at the range. So, you know, why not make a gun line and use these guys with the captain, make a gun line and just exploit these guys to the full. Likewise, great way of dealing with the feated blight drone. It won't last very long against these guys. So there's the rules and some thoughts on tactics for using the hell blasters. I mean, clearly when you get into the space marine index, the full marine list, there's a load of other tactical possibilities. So I'm not going to cover all those now because I'm still digesting that new book. Right. Let me talk quickly about points values in the mini decks. These cost 200 points per squad. So a intercessor squads, 124, these are 200. I wouldn't say that's too bad value given the firepower you get, but make sure they don't take fire straight away off enemy. They are going to be a priority target. If you've got an apothecary model, the index Imperium list, an apothecary would be a good accompanying unit to support these guys because they are going to get targeted by the enemy. They're just too juicy not to. In index Imperium 1, their points values have been rebalanced. Their power level has gone up to 12. You get the supercharged stat line written out as a separate line, so it's a bit more specific. And the rule here is a bit clearer in terms of priority. It says, on a hit roll of one, the bearer is slain after all of this weapon shots have been resolved. It does show you that his to hit reroll 
takes precedence over a plasma gun explosion. Points values in Index Imperium 1, these are slightly cheaper. They cost 190 points for a squad of five. You have to take them as squads of five in match play. There's no flexibility on the squad size, they come in fives. However, if you play in open play or even narrative play, if you've got a, a group of mates who want to do experimental games, you know, they're about 40 points a model. You could argue that they might make quite good sort of just snipers on their own, given the power of the weapon. So you could, in those sort of scenarios, in games just buy them singly and play them that way. That might be quite an interesting way to try these guys out as well. Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps it up for this review. I hope you've enjoyed a bit of an in-depth exploration of these models, really getting into what they offer. As I say, I think these are fantastic miniatures, like the rest of the Primaris range, you know, they're very well executed. And the downside from a modeling point of view is a cleanup required on these. I hope if Games Workshop are gonna start selling these separately as a box set, they're gonna to go to manufacturing wherever they do sprue A because the quality is better. On the battlefield, I think these are great. I like the concept of units that are armed with the same weapon and given the general upscaling in lethality of 8th edition, I think these are gonna find a lot of useful deployment in Marine Forces. And then finally, as I said, I will be posting a leaky cheese short on just doing the dish reflector on the plasma rifle as well, if you're interested in finding that out. I think apart from that though, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.